To some people in the palace, they just felt like Megan needed to get a grip. I mean, just come on, okay? Are you are you in or are you out, okay? If you're with us, this is how we behave. If you're not, then just go your separate ways. God be with you. No, no, she's got to cry and carry on. She's got to drag Harry into it. His, her distress is his distress. If they're going to be a couple, they have to bear each other's burdens, and this is the burden she expects him to bear. Well, as you can imagine, he was probably pretty worn down by this. By her constantly crying about his staff, whining about what it is that they will and won't let him her do, um, coupled with the fact that she is constantly on him about his friends, that, that shooting weekend in Sandringham did not go well. Um, everyone was appalled by her behavior, except for Harry, who didn't seem super clued in at the time that people didn't like what was happening. Um, and this is something that I, I, I just got to take this moment real, 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 real quick. Tom Bauer says that Harry didn't realize that what was happening was offensive. I think that Harry is not good at verbalizing, but I don't think he doesn't feel things. I think he just doesn't know how to say what he's feeling. And I would submit to you, in that scene, in the Netflix documentary, when Megan does that over the top bow and is mocking his family and their cu customs, the look on his face is one of contempt and disgust that she is maligning his family but he never has found his ability to voice that distaste for the way that she represents his family. I curtsied as though I was like. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you, your majesty. Like, was that okay? So he's going along, going along, going along, but I don't think it's that he didn't realize it. I think he just didn't know how to say, I don't like that you do that without driving her away because there was enough in the relationship that he felt like he needed that he thought, I guess I have to make my peace with the way I feel about that. It's just the way she expresses herself. It's just her Americanism. It's not that she's trying to be mean. It's just that I need to get used to that part of her personality. But he doesn't, he still hasn't gotten used to it because we saw it on his face when she was mocking his family. I think the same goes for what she was doing at that party. Tom Bauer says, and I reiterated in the last episode, but I've thought about it since, that he had no idea what was going on. I think he did. I think he just doesn't know how to say, I don't like it. And I think he puts the blame on himself, as many people who are in abusive relationships do. Oh, it's my fault for not understanding what they meant there, or I just need to get used to that, or it's, it's my own shortcoming. I'm just misreading. You know, I'll, I'll get over it. I'll swallow it. It's not that big of a deal. I'll get past it. I just need to, mm, you know, white knuckle it until I can get past that part of their personality because there's a lot of other good things I like. Now, with that being said, Harry had received an invitation to go to Tom Skippy Inskip's wedding. Skippy Inskip was one of his closest and dearest friends. He, he had invited Harry to the wedding and there have been reports, although I will say Tom Bauer does not make the same report. There have been reports that Megan was not invited to this wedding. It's a very small gathering. There's only 40 people at this event. So it would have made sense if Megan wasn't invited. Harry was. And people have said that there was some kind of breakup period going on here, that Harry was taking a little bit of distance from Megan, and that she decided she would go to the wedding. Since she knew that it was happening, she would just make her own way. Now, again, Tom Bauer does not say that Megan was not invited. He, he suggests that they had both been invited. Be that as it may, Harry was coming in from London. Megan arrived in a Toronto friend's private plane. So she, she clearly made arrangements to come and impress people. Otherwise, she could have just flown down in, you know, on any plane. Why did she have to take a friend's plane down to, down to Jamaica? That doesn't make any sense. So either it was an act of desperation, like I got to get on a plane right now, or I want to impress these people and make them think that I'm really such a much. I don't know. Uh, but again, we will never know if she was even invited. That seems to be in question. Uh, at least I haven't done enough research to find out the true answer to that. And we also, I also have never been able to find out was she really on a break with Harry at this point. 
Again, that is not even alluded to in Tom Bowers' book. He acts like they were both invited and that they just happened to be at separate places, so they came separately. Okay, that's like the least interesting thing about the story. I would think that Harry probably, after the situation with his friends at that shooting weekend, was probably relieved to think that Meghan might not get to come. Because he probably thought, you know, I really want to go to that wedding. Megan doesn't like my friends. If he didn't invite her, it may have just been because he truly thought she didn't want to go. Well, of course she wanted to go. She wants to hobnob with the elite. But, she, and she certainly isn't going to allow him to hobnob with his friends, who she has made a very poor impression on and who do not like her. She's not going to let him go to that event alone. So even if he told her, hey, I'm going to go to this wedding, but you don't need to come, acting like he, you know, he would have felt like, oh, I'm doing her a service by not making her feel like she has to come to this thing with my friends. Her reaction would have been like, oh, no, I'm coming. Because she's not going to let him hang around all weekend with these people who might turn him against her. So she makes her way down there. Again, this girl does not know how to make a favorable first impression. You know, in Spare, Harry acts like Megan was so lovely and everybody thought she was divine. And everybody, you know, from the get-go was just shocked and awed by, by her kindness and her thoughtfulness. He talks about how lovely she was with the staff, how she was always over there offering William some kind of homeopathic remedies for his reoccurring cough, how she was so thoughtful about other people. Yet, I have not read one story in Tom Bauer's book in which her first introductions were positive. This is yet one more a bit of evidence that she does not know how to carry herself with any class or dignity. About 40 guests, including Harry's oldest friends, gathered for the three-day party at the Round Hill Hotel in Montego Bay. All the parents and attendants fondly remember giving Harry cottage pie and comfort during his teenage years. The close-knit group keenly anticipated meeting Megan. They were quickly disappointed. Not only did she quibble about the food, but behaved princessy, refusing to engage with Harry's friends. She wasn't interested in us, said one mother. Okay, can you imagine the lack of class to arrive at a wedding and say anything about the food? Look, I've been to my share of podunk weddings, and let me just tell you, it would never even enter my mind to say anything about the food that somebody had served. Yet, at this classy event, in which everything would have been quite luxurious. She thought that she had the right to open her mouth about anything that was being served. And see, this is what I'm talking about. She's just this self-proclaimed expert in all things. But who made her expert on food? Who made her an expert on fashion? Who made her an expert on beauty? She's just decided that she is. So she thinks she's got the right because she has that blog online about food. That she can come and complain about the food. Hmm. Oh, you guys went that way with the main dish? Mm, Cassie, I think that would actually be more appropriate for a barn raising. I, I think I would have chosen something a little bit more elegant. Mm, because see, that is kind of embarrassing for you. Did you have help though, picking out your menu? Oh, okay, you did. All right, but they're, they're kind of out of touch though with what's current, yeah. Yeah, I, I probably wouldn't have gone with them just because they're going to do some like throwback French stuff. And I think that it would be better for you to just have tried some more exotic flavors. I mean, we are in Jamaica after all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, like I, I'll try some of that. Um, just kind of bland though for my palate and... It just seems like you would have wanted to do something more fun for a wedding. <laughs> I don't know. That, that, like, that would have been my take. Um, I would have totally gone a completely different way with this meal. But, you know, I, I actually do know a lot about food. On my blog, like, I have so many, like, awesome recipes you, you could have done instead. Yeah. I, I, would have, I wish that you would have told me because I, I could have, like, had so many ideas. Yeah. Well, I mean... At least none of this food will give your guests indigestion because it's so bland. So you've got that, right? You've got that. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Can you eat? I mean, that, that is how I imagine her going into this. Okay. Now, this is a very important event. Um, even though it was small, Harry going to this friend's wedding, people would have known about it. The fact that Megan arrived all this way, there would have been media interest in the fact that they were together because the media had not had that many opportunities to take pictures of them together. Well, not surprisingly, 
people showed up, not for Megan, for Harry. So there's paparazzi who have followed. He spotted a photographer in the bushes and lost it completely. He was incandescent. I mean, he was standing there in a swimming swimsuit, but he was just like rage. He like a madman, you know, in his swimming trunks, just raging and screaming and carrying on. And all of his friends who saw it were shocked that he was acting like this because he'd been followed by paparazzi his whole life. And yes, they knew he didn't like it, but for him to be completely losing it like this was a new side that they, they knew that he had, you know, he had strong feelings about things. But this business of just, you know, acting like a clown, screaming and carrying on, that shocked them to say that, yeah, but this is not new for you. Why are you acting like this? It's almost like he had to perform for Megan. Like, yeah, I do take it seriously. I do believe I shouldn't be under these circumstances, you know? And he had to be over there, you know, playing his outrage for her. But I also think that he was probably on edge because Megan was there and he wasn't able to just enjoy it with his friends. So I think there was a lot going on in him. Um, one, because he thought, you know, was trying to deal with her very clear agitation at the wedding. These pictures of her at this wedding are outrageous. It, they, they are so unflattering to her character. And he, so he's probably trying to mitigate her wrath and indignation. Then he spots a paparazzi, knows that so far as he understands, she doesn't like that kind of thing. And then he's trying to deal with his frustration that his friends don't like her. I mean, there was a lot going on. He didn't know how to express it. So he just acted out in rage towards the photographer. His friends were horrified. They continued to dislike Megan. Their suspicion of Megan increased. The sentiment was mutual. Megan disliked Inskit and his crowd. Their jokes and their attitude towards the world was unacceptable to her. So this is the second time his friends have had to deal with her for an extended amount of time. Over the following weeks, Harry's friends agreed that he was rushing too fast towards marriage. Uneasy about the influence on Harry of the woman who had suddenly walked into their lives, their instincts warned them to beware of the intruder. Several shared their fears with William. Inskip was among the first to tell Harry to be cautious. Best to be sure, he said. William spoke next. Don't feel like you need to rush this, he said to his brother. Take as much time as you need to know this girl. After all, he'd known Kate for eight years before he proposed. And again, I, I, I've seen this several times in the comments. Well, Harry didn't have the time. He didn't have eight years. Well, nobody's asking him to take eight years, but uh, could you take a, like one, two years? Oh. Furious about the closing ranks, Harry told Meghan. Both agreed they were victims of racism. William fumed Harry was a snob. Okay, but that doesn't make sense. William's no snob. He married a girl without title and without rank and just, you know, middle class girl. You know, so don't even with this Harry Williams a snob. But what is this garbage about we're victims of racism? If you will show me the article in which people are maligning you for your race, I'll be the first one to defend you. If you can show me in which people have spoken about you in ways that are categorically untrue, false, and are completely and totally racist and ugly and misogynistic and white supremacist, I will be the first to defend you. There's not one sane thinking person who wants a society in which racism reigns supreme, okay? But you cannot use those hot words if you cannot prove that it has happened. The number one reason for that is that then those words lose their power. So if you want those words to mean something, you can't use them unless they actually mean what you're trying to say they mean. And if you don't have proof, then you don't have any claims of racism. Also, it was never racism that was coming after Megan. Now, she wanted to make an argument that there were some classist situations going on and that people were dragging her because she wasn't of the right class and she didn't live in the right echelon of society. She could have had an argument for that. She could have said, it is unfair and categorically untrue that just because my family has had bankruptcy issues, I am somehow a liability for Harry to know me. That's my family. I've had my whole adult life. I've done all my own things. You should look at what I've managed to do my life. I am not my dad. I'm not my siblings. I'm not my mother. You know, she could have had an argument about that if she had wanted to go that way. She didn't though. And if she had come out saying, I, I hate the fact that because I didn't grow up uh, as wealthy or that my family has, like every family, some issues. I hate that that is all anyone will talk about with me. Because everybody has had the experience of feeling like that they're now being attacked for something they couldn't control in their family's history. You know, maybe your parents had an ugly divorce or maybe, 
you're, you were poor, whatever it is. There's lots of things that are in our past that we think it's not fair that I'm bearing the brunt of the decisions that I didn't make. If she'd come out that way, she would have so many more people sympathize with her and be on her side. But when, when she went this weird angle of racism, people were like, who's not racist? And then people were turned against her because she was claiming something that had never happened and it made her untrustworthy. All right, well, um, Harry strongly resented William coming to him and saying, you should really take a second to think about if you and Megan are really meant to be. Just take some time to get to know her, okay? Because we are seeing sides of her that maybe you can't because you're wearing your little rose-colored glasses. But, you know, Skippy's telling me that the wedding was kind of bad with her there. The shooting weekend didn't go well. I just think, Harry, that you need to take some time and just consider if, if she can fit in with us. If she doesn't like anybody that's in our group, I just don't know. I don't know how you will be happy if she's always mad at you. Harry hated it. He, he'd always resented being below it. William in the hierarchy and now William is trying to tell him he can't choose who he wants to date at least that's how he saw it now he's enraged and he just had this overwhelming sense of inferiority that people wouldn't let him do what he wanted to do and that almost made him just double down on the whole Megan thing you know he wasn't going to be told what to do and his relationships with his brother and his friends started breaking down at this point because he saw them as unsupportive um, and it didn't help the fact that as soon as they said anything to him, his ally was Megan. He would run and tell Megan, guess what they said now? And of course, she was only too happy to blow up anything that they had said to be extra negative because good, that means she can pull him away. She doesn't want to have to share power with any of those people. She wants to be the only one in control of Harry and, and by that gain all of the status that he has. So, of course, she's not going to try to help him get past anything that William and Skippy have said. She's going to pour fuel on that fire and try to help that relationship break down faster. A good partner would have said, well, I don't know if you're understanding what he's saying. We haven't really known each other that long. Maybe they misunderstood something I said. You know, a good partner would have tried to help you maintain and manage uh, the relationships. I'm not saying that she had to love the fact that there was criticism, but quite frankly, she had acted in a way that was classy or having if she would had any dignity in any of these scenarios they wouldn't have ever had any problems with her 